All right, so thank everyone for coming today. Uh, my name is Brandon Grant. I'm the Marketing Director here at Quoteworks. And today we're going to be discussing and demonstrating the new features in Quoteworks version 5.2. Um, so we basically had two new builds uh, since we released uh, 5.2, so we're going to go over those new features, uh, kind of how you set them up and how you can use them in your installation. Uh, so just a quick overview uh, for today. Uh, we're going to do just kind of a short PowerPoint presentation. Uh, just kind of um, talking about the new features and kind of uh, some of the capabilities of those. And then we'll actually do what's a uh, live demonstration of these new features. And then we'll go back and answer some of the questions. Um, so to get started, uh, version 5.2 includes 29 new features, uh, 25 fixes, and four miscellaneous features. So there's just some smaller features that we added there as well. Um, it also includes a bunch of CRM and PSA updates uh, for integrations to keep um, compatible with your systems. Um, so if you are having any type of issue integrating Quoteworks with your system, um, update to the latest version that should resolve it. Um, this is just a quick snapshot of what we have upgraded in 5.2. So if you're on ConnectWise 2016.6 or 5, um, go ahead and update uh, to the latest version of Quoteworks. If you are using QuickBooks 2017 in the US or Canada, uh, you'll want to update as well. Um, additionally, if you are using QuickBooks 2016 Australia, we added support for that. So, um, so for your QuickBooks users, it's going to be very important that you get onto the latest version. Um, the MSCRM users, uh, we do support 8.1 uh, in the latest version. It's fully supported, um, not just beta support. So if you were on an um, earlier interim, you would have had beta support for it. Updating the 5.2 will give you actual full support for that system. Uh, same thing for Sugar users, 7.7, Maximizer, 14.1. Uh, and anyone that is using or has upgraded to uh, Microsoft SQL Server 2016, uh, that's also supported in version 5.2 for you. So um, there's a few other smaller ones um, that are available as well. Uh, those are always available in the update notes on the website. So um, definitely check that out. Uh, if you have questions about your CRM or PSA, uh, definitely let us know. and um, we'll be able to uh, take care of that for you. So let's go ahead and uh, get right into it. So what's new? Um, so for the Edelweiss users, the product content subscription users, um, we added a ton of new features. It's going to make life a lot easier. Um, some really cool features uh, that we're going to walk through today. Um, one of the, the biggest ones is going to be the My Favorites folder. That is going, as you're going to see in your product lookup window, once you update to 5.2, you're actually going to see uh, the ability to expand the Edelize database, and you'll see a My Favorites folder underneath it. Um, really nice feature because you're basically just going to be able to save items that you search for on a regular basis into this folder. So it makes life a lot easier instead of having to search for a lot of the same items over and over again. You can quickly do a search, add it to the My Favorites folder, and then next time you need to quote it again, you can just go straight to that My Favorites folder. So it kind of creates a, a favorites list for you. Um, every user in Quoteworks is going to have their own unique folder. So um, each user, you know, sales rep A and sales rep B can actually create their own list of items that they quote on a regular basis. So you don't have to worry about having like a master list or anything like that. Um, kind of building on that, um, one of the nice new features we added in Edelize uh, in um, Quoteworks was the ability to use Edelize for your bundles and configuration. So if you are creating bundles in Quoteworks and you want to be able to pull items from Edelize, you can now do that. Um, same thing for um, configurations. If you're using configurations, um, this will also allow you to build from items in Edelize. Uh, you can also pull them directly from the My Favorites folder as well. So um, some pretty cool new features. I'll show you how to set those up and use them today as well. Um, support for Pay Special. Uh, this is a really great feature if any of you um, retrieve or receive um, items from vendors, um, you know, maybe Ingram Micro sends you a, a quote, and instead of you building it, you know, they build it for you, and then you import it, and the quote we're choosing the Pay Special. You can now get the Edelize content from that particular vendor or from those vendors uh, when you're using the Pay Special feature. And again, something that I'll walk through also. And then the Refresh Item Detail button on the um, Grid Toolbar, uh, it's going to be a new little icon that will actually get you the product content for a specific item. Um, so if you don't want to use the um, Edelize panel window to open everything, get pricing availability, update everything, you just want to get the content updated, you can use this Item Refresh Detail button. And um, again, something that I'll um, walk through here in just a few minutes. Um, I'll see that, uh, I see that a lot of people um, are posting questions, so that's great. Uh, continue to post away. Um, I'm not ignoring your questions. I'm just going to circle back at the end of the webinar and answer them. So if you do have a question, you know, just sit tight. I will circle back um, at the end and um, go through those for you. 
Okay. So um, one of the other features that we added um, was an update to our leasing integration. Um, leasing integration uh, will allow you to basically convert any document in QuoteWorks as a monthly payment. So basically a customer is going to pay a leasing amount. Um, we've also added the ability to add any monthly recurring charges into that leasing amount so that you can give that customer just that single monthly payment. So it's just a little checkbox show you how it works today, um, but it's a nice little feature, so if you don't want to separate, you know, the um, the leasing amounts, you know, maybe the one-time items and the monthly recurring, you just want to kind of bundle everything together, uh, you're going to have a much easier time of doing that with this integration. Uh, we also added a new display macro on the layouts, uh, so you can actually um, have a little more control over the description of the payment options on your documents. All right, so something that will um, be very useful for a lot of users and something that um, a lot of users have been asking for for a very long time uh, is the ability to, um, for a little more flexibility in the licensing and security settings, um, basically the ability to force out users uh, in QuoteWorks. So uh, we've added that functionality uh, in 5.2, uh, and this is going to allow you to actually um, not only uh, view which users are logged into QuoteWorks, which you could always do, but you couldn't really do anything about it. Now you can actually um, terminate a running instance and revoke the license allocation. Um, these do have two separate functions. I'm going to explain them now and we'll go over them again. Uh, but um, it's going to be very important that 99% of the time you're probably going to want to revoke the license allocation. Revoking the license allocation basically removes that license from that user. So in my example here, you can see um, Adam is the top name in there. If I wanted to revoke Adam's license, when I do that, it won't kick him out of QuoteWorks, so that way he won't lose anything that he's working on. Basically what it does is it removes his license. If he had an open document, it'll let you save that document, and then he can exit QuoteWorks. He won't be able to do anything else. He'll basically be able to save it, and then close QuoteWorks or close it without saving. Those are going to be his two options. Um, so extremely useful um, You know, if someone goes out on vacation or leaves for the weekend or goes home sick or whatever it is and you need to free up that license key, you're now going to be able to do that. So um, revoke license allocation the ones you're, you're going to really use. Um, terminate the running instance. That does exactly what it sounds like. It's going to actually close a running instance of QuoteWorks. Um, the bad thing about this is that if you're terminating someone's instance, uh, they don't get a chance to save their document. It'll basically pop up a message on their window saying, hey, your instance is going to be terminated in the next 60 seconds. And then after that, we close it. So we'll actually pull the license as soon as you terminate it, and then it'll actually close um, the core system. So that's useful if someone's gone for the weekend and you need to run an update or something like that. You can force these users out that way. Um, otherwise, you know, if you don't need that to close core, you just need a license, use or revoke license allocation. So um, I know it's a little confusing. We'll go back into a little more detail uh, in just a few minutes. But um, so that's some, um, a long-awaited feature for a lot of you. Um, so I'm sure you'll be happy to use that. And like I said, just need obviously these are all 5.2 features. So you just need to update to the latest, and you'll have access for it. Um, the event viewer down at the bottom um, that will um, essentially track all the licensing uh, for you, so you can see when users logged in, when they logged out, um, if they tried to log in, that kind of thing. If the login failed for some reason. Uh, those type of events are now captured, and you can actually view them. So um, that's what the uh, event viewer will do, and I'll show you all how that works here in just a few minutes. Uh, management report exporting. Um, so this is um, another feature that had been requested quite a bit, was the ability to export the management reports to like a CSV or text file. Um, so now you're able to do that. Uh, you can even save your settings. Um, the really nice thing about this is you actually get to specify which fields, um, essentially which columns are sent over to your CSV or text file, and you can even set a, a sort order for those fields, so extremely useful, saves a lot of time, lets you get those um, reports into Excel if you want to, so you don't have to use just the PDF version of the document. Um, we did um, just update in the very latest, um, basically uh, keep the original functionality as well, um, so you'll have that available also. Um, but this is going to be helpful to a lot of you who have requested ways to get the reports out of, you know, essentially a PDF file into a CSV file. So you'll be able to do that, and like I said, you're provided with a little bit more flexibility where you can actually just export the columns that you want instead of having to export everything that's in the report that you're running. So um, again, something that can save you a lot of time. Um, and like I said, uh, you can continue to use them as a PDF report. So if you're not wanting to use this functionality, don't worry, you're not going to have to change anything on your reports. They're just going to operate the exact same way as they had been. 
And then we have some miscellaneous features that we've added as well, uh, just some smaller features um, for the ConnectWise users. Um, recurring products in ConnectWise, uh, you're able to set that up now. Um, you do have to be on 2016.3 or higher uh, for the ConnectWise users uh, in order to use that functionality. But once you do that, if you're upgraded to the latest version of QuoteWorks, you can set it up where you can use recurring products. Uh, there's instructions in the help file on how to set that up. It's based very simple, it takes about two minutes to set up. Uh, and then any items that you have that are marked as products in QuoteWorks and recurring will actually go over to ConnectWise as recurring products as well. A uh, quick preview for layouts. Uh, for any of you that want to preview what your document's going to look like, um, especially for those who add um, you know, cover pages and literature documentations where you have you know, maybe these 30 page documents that you're sending out on a regular basis, you just want to see what the document's going to look like without those attachments. Now you can double click on a layout and it'll do a quick preview and just show you what the layout would look like without any of those attachments. It just makes it a little easier to kind of preview what you're looking at um, without having to see the various attachments. Specifically if they're static documents, you don't need to see them each time. Uh, for everyone that's using the Dell Punch-Out credentials, uh, the Dell Punch-Out integration, uh, if you have your Dell Punch-Out uh, credentials, you can now place orders through QuoteWorks uh, for Dell. Um, using that integration and uh, credit card support has been added. So before you had to have terms set up with Dell, uh, now you can actually enter in your credit card information and it will be uh, processed through the, um, through the ordering window as well. Um, Edelize, we also added support for required items. Um, it's a little smaller feature, uh, a little lesser known, um, but if any of you are using required items in QuoteWorks and you want to set up um, items uh, to use Edelize as well, those are supported. Uh, and then the big one, um, something that we've been working on for a very long time, uh, Quarks Web Support, you'll see um, if you go to Tools Options, there's now an option in your cloud account for the Quarks Web Setup. Um, that is, we're targeting um, probably early quarter one uh, for that to be available for a lot of you. Um, we're going to have, we're going to be rolling out beta testers here in the next couple weeks uh, so everyone can start testing it. So um, we're very, very close, um, making a lot of progress, everything's on track, so we're Looking good, but um, yeah, so this, that's one of the major features of this release was um, getting the infrastructure in place for QuoteWorks Web so we can roll that out. All right. Um, as always, uh, the website is a great place to access resources. So if you have questions, need assistance, obviously feel free to contact us by phone. Uh, you know, give us a call, send us an email. Um, we have over 140 videos on the website, so it's a great place to go for more information as well. Uh, check out the help file. Help file is a great place to go when you have questions about specific features. Uh, it's searchable. Uh, it's really easy to kind of get around and um, has pretty much every feature in QuoteWorks documented in there. Um, obviously, the live and recorded webinars this is a great um, opportunity to learn more about QuoteWorks. Um, those are also on the website available for you. Uh, there is also a user's form that's available. Um, a lot of users don't know about that, but if you go to our support page and scroll down about halfway down, you'll see there's an option for a user's form. That's a great place to interact and share questions and comments with other QuoteWorks users. Um, so if you have questions and about you know, maybe how other users are using QuoteWorks or things like that, uh, it's a great place to go for information. Um, and obviously we have partners all over the world uh, who are available to help with questions as well. Uh, the forum is also a great place. Uh, we have a lot of partners that um, consistently log in and answer questions for users as well. So it's a great place of information. Um, highly recommend utilizing our partners and our forum for uh, information on uh, how to use QuoteWorks. Um, for this year, in, uh, or com this coming year rather, in 2017, uh, we're going to be continuing some trainings. Um, right now, we're looking at a training in Los Angeles in January. Uh, and then Chicago and Toronto, because um, we had a lot of requests from Canadian users to um, set up a training up there. Um, so we'll be doing a training. Um, Chicago and Toronto, we're probably looking at one every quarter. So uh, second quarter for Chicago, third quarter for Toronto, uh, and then possibly another training uh, fourth quarter somewhere else in the U.S. Um, hasn't been set yet. Um, but we are at a, we do go to a lot of events, so you know check the calendar, um, look for our posts on Facebook and email blasts. Um, we go to a lot of ASCII events. Um, our next coming event, I think, is in February for them. And then we have another exchange solutions. going to be a new one for us um, in March. Uh, so if you do see us at events, definitely come stop by the booth, say hello. You know, if you have questions, always happy to, uh, to meet users and uh, answer any questions you may have. Uh, definitely follow us on social media. We post pretty much everything that's going on with CoreWorks on Facebook and Twitter. Um, all our videos are available on YouTube and uh, LinkedIn. Um, you know, obviously, it's a great place to connect with us as well. Uh, and as always, 
when you have questions, definitely contact our sales team. I'll be happy to answer anything that you might have. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get back into Coreworks here, and we're going to walk through the new features. Um, the first ones we'll start off with are going to be some of the product content subscriptions, so the Edelize updates. Um, we did a webinar back on these uh, when they were kind of still in beta mode um, or in the late summer. Um, so there's a full webinar on these features, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but they're pretty straightforward, pretty e easy to use. Um, so for those of you that are using Edelize, um, you're going to see when you update to 5.2, uh, when you click on your products window, you're actually going to see the Edelize icon. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to see here. Um, but you're going to see a little plus sign next to it now so that you can actually expand the look of this folder. So if I click on this, you'll see I now have a My Favorites folder. And I actually have a couple items already inside of the uh, My Favorites folder. Um, but adding and removing items to the My Favorites folder is going to be very, very easy. So I'm going to go ahead and go through a search real quick just to show you. Um, so what we'll do is we'll click on Edelize and we'll start a search. So you just start your search like you typically would look for an item. And let's go ahead and get to a little bit more of a shorter list here. Pull one of these items in. Okay. So once you've found an item that you want to add to your favorites folder, all you need to do is simply right click on the search icon or on the uh, in the search window where you have your item highlighted. And when you right click, that's going to open up your right click menu. And you'll see down near about, about two thirds of the way to the bottom, there will be a new menu option that says add a product to my favorites. And when you click on that, that will actually add that particular item to the my favorites folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then down in the bottom left corner of the uh, search window, you'll actually see a confirmation message just saying, hey, one item was added to Edelize Favorites. Uh, so yes, you can actually add multiple items at once. If you hold down Control, highlight multiple items, right click, add to My Favorites, it'll add those items to your My Favorites folder. Now if we go to My Favorites folder, you'll see we have our four items in there. And uh, there's the item that I just added. And I can get my pricing and availability from Edelize here. So um, obviously the advantage of this is that you can build a list of items that you use on a regular basis. So you don't have to go through the search process. You just have essentially a live list of items. As you're no longer selling items or maybe items get discontinued, you can remove them from your uh, My Favorites folder. To do that, simply highlight one or more items, right click, and then you'll see there's an option that says remove Edelize product from My Favorites. So you have, you have the option to add the, um, an item to My Favorites and to remove them. And it works the same way where you can highlight multiple items and remove multiple items uh, from the My Favorites folder also. So that's a feature that's just going to be available to the Edelize users. Um, there's no setup required. You don't actually have to um, go into the options or anything like that. It's just going to be part of the uh, feature set for Edelize when you turn it on. Um, now, bundles and configuration support for Edelize. Uh, it's going to be very simple. Uh, what you're going to do is, if we click on bundles here, and we'll just select an existing bundle, and I'm just going to click edit, go to my items tab. So the way you add items to a bundle through Edelize is just like if you were adding them from any other vendor previously. You get to your items tab, click add, and then in this case, you can search Edelize for an item that you want to add to your database or to your bundle. Or, like I said, if you want to pull them from the My Favorites folder, that's a great place to go as well. Um, the one thing to note, if you are going to pull items from the My Favorites folder into your bundles and into your configurations, um, is go ahead and select the vendor that you typically want to sell through. Um, so in this case, you know, maybe uh, Tech Data is the one I want to sell through, or that's my preferred vendor, or Ingram Micro is your preferred, ven preferred vendor. Go ahead and select the vendor, um, because that's the default vendor we're going to use. If you don't select a vendor, Quartworks is just going to assign the first vendor uh, that we can get pricing and availability for. In this case, since I have all four supported, it would be DNH. Um, so if you have a preferred vendor that you um, purchase most of your items for, when you're adding them to your bundles and configurations, 
go ahead and preset the vendor. You can always change it because we can update the pricing availability and the content and all that information from the document items tab. Um, but if instead of having to worry about that, if you want to you know, use the best pricing or latest pricing or whatever, um, this is an easy way. Just go ahead and set the vendor. So if you don't set one, we'll set one for you automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and select tech data, choose select add, and then you can see my item has now been added to my bundle. And if I scroll to the right there, you can actually see my vendor supported. Uh, my selected vendor um, says tech data, so it lets you know that that vendor was selected there for you. So uh, just keep that in mind, like I said, um, if you have a preferred vendor. If you don't really have a preferred vendor, then you don't have to set one because you're going to end up updating it anyway with uh, pricing availability. So, um, so using uh, Edelize for bundles configuration is very easy. Configurations can be the exact same way. Go to your container, edit the items, um, click on add, and pull items into the bundles configuration. Uh, one of the other new features that we added was the ability to refresh item details. Um, so what that means is if I pull in, here, let me just pull in some demo items. If I pull in an item into QuoteWorks and I change its description or um, I shorten it, maybe I change the marketing description or something like that and I want to reset it or essentially get that description back. Uh, or maybe it's just an older item, it's from a template or something, I can actually refresh the item's content without having to do a full search or use the um, update. See, there's actually a little, uh, there's a new button here called Refresh Item with Edelized Details. Now, if I click on that, that will update the Edelized Detail for that particular item, and you can see it's updated my description now. Now, one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest uh, advantages of using this feature is that you can actually do multiple items at once. So instead of having to select, click on the panel button, load it, load, update, and then go to the next one manually. If you, you know, if you have a couple items on the quote, 10, 20, 30 items can take a little bit of time. So this will actually let you select which items you want to update, click on them, and then you can refresh them with the item detail from Utilize. So again, just a nice little feature, uh, something that can save you time in the long run uh, when you're running through that process. All right, and then the last feature I wanted to um, talk about with the Edelize integration is going to be the Pace Special. Um, so with Edelize, you can now actually pull in uh, the, um, a quote from using Pace Special. Um, so not a new feature there, uh, but one of the things that you're going to be able to do now is actually get pricing or get Edelize content um, from the vendor. Uh, if they're supported in Edelize. So what that means is if Ingram Micro sends you a quote and you have the vendor and the vendor part number, when you pull it into QuoteWorks through Edelize, it'll actually update with the Edelize content so it could get the product picture, the marketing summary, customer friendly description, that type of information. So um, show you how it works, it's gonna be very, very simple. Um, so in this case, we're going to use a quote from Tech Data just because that's what I have. Um, so we're going to simply highlight the data that we need, and then we'll go to our Paste Special. So we'll click on Edit Paste Special. Click on Start a New Session. Click Next. We're just going to copy the data from the clipboard, and then we'll go ahead and do our mappings. Uh, now, if you have templates set up uh, in your Paste Special wizard already, uh, the only thing that you might need to add is going to be a vendor column or a manufacturer column. So a lot of times um, you may not have the vendor included already, so you just need to add the vendor column to your uh, spreadsheet that you're importing. Um, or if you do have it in there already, then it'll work. So you basically need either the vendor and vendor part number or the manufacturer part number and manufacturer. So uh, it doesn't matter which two you have, you just have to have two of those in order to do the lookup from Edelize. Uh, that's just a requirement from Edelize. We have to pass it, um, at least that information to Edelize to look for a particular item. Um, so I have my vendor column uh, mapped. My next one's going to be my vendor uh, part number. So we'll go ahead and map that one. Then my manufacturer part number. And then our description, our unit cost. That's our extended cost. We can skip that one in that unit list price. All right. So you'll see here the base um, special wizard, for those of you that are using this functionality, it's going to look exactly the same. You're not going to notice a difference, except that there's going to be a little checkbox at the bottom that's going to allow you to pull the product details from Edelize and apply this data to the document, So which means that if any of these items, um, descriptions or 
pictures have changed or maybe they don't have a very good description, those will be updated. Um, I think only the first item in mine is an actual item. I think all these other items are just fake items that I created, uh, for example. So this first item's description should actually update. So right now it just says Cisco switch. So when I pull it in using uh, the Eatalyze integration, it should actually update with a real description uh, from Eatalyze. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next and then finish. And then, yeah, all the other ones stayed the same. Uh, but you can see since this one was an actual real item that had real part numbers, uh, it went ahead and populated my description for this particular item. So I now have a real description for this item rather than just the generic one that perhaps the vendor sent to me or just the one that I had entered in myself. So um, again, those are just kind of the new features with the, uh, the new Eatalyze integration uh, that's going to help save some time and kind of uh, make things a little easier on you, uh, on those of you that are using the Eatalyze integration. So you can take advantage of those now uh, when you do get upgraded to version 5.2. All right, um, the next feature is going to be the leasing integration. So we actually added an update to our leasing integration where you can essentially bundle all of your items into a single, month, uh, single monthly payment. So before, if you had a, so for instance, let's say this item here was a recurring charge. Typically, what we would show would be these three items that are one-time charge, the leasing rate, and then the monthly amount. Now, with the new feature in Quartz, you can actually bundle all four of these items into a single monthly payment that the client pays for on a monthly basis. So, um, very easy to use. Um, that's kind of a new thing with Quartz, trying to make everything a lot easier to use with the existing features where there's just some options for you to utilize instead of having to do any kind of setup. So, what we'll do is we'll click on the Sale Info tab click on Add Lease Payment Option. And then, if in this case, I'm using the Great America integration, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave that set. But you'll see there's a new checkbox that says Add Monthly Recurring to Lease Payment. So that's all you have to do to use this functionality. Simply click on the checkbox, and now when I calculate the lease payment in QuoteWorks, it will actually populate the lease payment including the monthly recurring amount. Um, if I want to leave it separate, you know, maybe you do want to break out saying, well, these are going to be recurring payments, and this is the lease amount. And, you know, we want to keep those separate uh, so they understand the difference there. Um, that's fine. Or, like I said, if you just want to bundle everything together into those two payments um, or into a single payment, you can do that with this checkbox. So I'll simply select that and a couple options, and we'll get our lease amounts there. And you can see the various lease amounts that are available for this particular document. And then if I uncheck that and choose get lease payments, you'll see it'll re recalculate without the recurring monthly amount in there. So again, uh, just another option for you. This will remember your previous setting. So if you check this box for add monthly recurring lease payment and then you add a few lease payments to the document um, or you do a couple um, it's always going to have this box checked. You'll just have to uncheck it. So it's essentially whatever the last option you selected or deselected is what it's going to remember in QuoteWorks. Uh, and that'll be per user. So if some of your users need to add that monthly recurring to the lease payment, they can. Uh, other users, uh, if they don't want to, they can leave it unchecked. So that'll just be a per user setting. Um, so again, pretty easy to use. Um, now, one of the other things that we did to kind of simplify uh, when you're offering lease payment options is the ability to change the verbiage. Um, so when you have a payment option in here, such as terms and credit card, before you couldn't actually process, you couldn't change the verbiage of what the um, payment looked like. It would just say, this is just the default says purchase, terms upfront purchase, plus this much monthly. So now we've added the ability for where you can kind of change that. So in your, this is actually a setting, and this is a site-wide setting, so if you do make this change, just make sure you're changing it for everyone in your system. Uh, but under your tools options menu in QuoteWorks, and I'm just going to let uh, go to meeting catch up with me there. So tools options, and then if we click on the payment tab, you'll actually see down at the bottom the purchase option display macro. And this is where you can change kind of the verbiage or the wording of the payment option on the document. So if you wanted to say something else, um, so right now it'll basically say the subpayment type, so purchase terms, you know, purchase credit card, um, and then the purchase amount. But if you just, maybe you just wanted to say 
terms, this amount. You know, credit card this amount. You can kind of simplify it, or you can put more worded in there. So you have a little bit more flexibility with kind of how that's going to work. Um, there is a macro um, associated with this on the layout. So whatever you changes you make here, if you already have that payment option macro on your layout, uh, it'll just be updated automatically with the verbiage that you change here. So you don't have to add anything special or new here. Um, so again, just makes it a little easier uh, to kind of simplify things um, on the document. All right, so th that's what we added up for late uh, for leasing. Uh, we did do a webinar with Great America um, a couple months ago, I think back in October, over some of the new features in the leasing integration and that it um, how to use it and some of the advantages of it. Um, so definitely check that out if you do have additional questions about the leasing integration in QuiltWorks. Okay, so so for now, one of the um, the big features that um, a lot of people had been asking and requesting for quite a while. Um, the ability to force users out of QuoteWorks. Um, so there's a couple things I need to mention here uh, before we before I walk you through how to do that. Uh, first of all, by default, you have to be an admin user or have master rights in QuoteWorks in order to use this functionality. So if you don't have master rights, you're not going to be able to do it. However, there is a security setting that you can utilize that will basically turn on this feature for someone else. So maybe if someone's like a sales manager um, or tech manager or something like that and they don't have master rights in QuoteWorks, but they need to be able to force users out to like free up licensing and things like that nature, uh, then you can actually provide them um, security settings to do just that. So um, I'll show you how the uh, force out works first, uh, then I'll actually show you where the security setting for that is. So under your utilities menu in QuoteWorks, go ahead and click on show logged in users. Uh, and I only have one um, I only have one person logged into my installation right now, so it's just going to show my name. Uh, but I'll show you how long I've been logged in and then what my uh, QuoteWorks login is. So mine's just QuoteWorks uh, and my initials. And then you'll see how many licenses I have. So I have five total licenses, currently one of four network users, and I have a remote key, but that's not logged in to my system currently. So then you'll then see there's three different options. The event viewer, which will show you basically if a license has been revoked, um, if a login has failed, if a login was success, if a log off was success. Basically anything to do with a logging in or the licensing will be saved here and you can actually view it and you can see it based on a specific user. So if someone logged in and they keep saying they're trying to log in and it's failing or something like that, uh, you can actually check to see if they're actually logging in. Maybe they're in a demo of course and said somewhere else trying to log into that or something. So um, you can actually see that information here. We're going to capture all of that for you. Now terminate running instance and revoke license allocation. I'm going to talk about revoke license allocation first because this is the one that you're going to probably use the most often. Um, this is the one we recommend using the most often. Basically revoke license allocation is going to free up a license key. So if I had another user in here, let's say I had um, Adam. So Adam's logged in here, and we have two licenses. Um, it's Adam and someone else. I need to get in. Adam has left for the day, um, but he didn't close down QuoteWorks. Um, I don't want to close his installation because he may have been working on a document. I don't want him to lose his work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is revoke his license allocation. So all you would do is highlight him and choose revoke license allocation. I'm, I'm not going to do that because that's going to log me out of QuoteWorks. Um, so I'm not going to do that to myself. That's all you need to do is highlight the username and choose revoke license allocation. What that does it will pull the license key from Adam and free it up for another user to log in and use. So that makes it very easy for another user to basically, you know, as a sales manager, you can go in, check to see who's logged in. Oh, okay, I know Adam has left. Let me go ahead and pull Adam's license key since he didn't close out, and that way someone else can log in and use that license key. By revoking the license key, Adam's QuoteWorks installation basically becomes unusable. The only thing he can do is if he had a quote open, he'll have the option to save it. So if he had been working on something, he can save his work and then close in. So the next time he comes into the office, opens up his machine, goes to QuoteWorks, he'll see that it'll tell him, it's like, hey, your license allocation has been revoked. You need to save your document if you're working on one. So he can see that, he can hit save, and then he can close out of QuoteWorks um, without any issue. At that point, he can then re-log in if he needs to. So that's typically what we would recommend because this leaves um, any open documents um, currently in the installation and available. Terminate the running instance. So now if you have someone in QuoteWorks who's maybe, maybe they're going on vacation for two weeks um, and they just forgot to log out of QuoteWorks, 
and you need to update Quartworks, so you need to kick everybody out. Everybody is out except for this one person. Um, you know, Adam didn't leave, uh, didn't log out of Quartworks when he left for his two-week vacation. Um, now you can actually terminate that running instance so you can run the update. The only downside to this is if he has something that he had open, um, it's not going to get saved. Um, there is a way that you, you can contact support and they can look at, uh, there's going to be a backup of the document create, um, saved. It's kind of wonky and um, it's not something that we recommend, So, um, but we know this is just something that a lot of you need, where you need to be able to just kick a user out. You just need to flat out, we need to kick him out of CoreWorks, close CoreWorks down so we can get everybody else updated and move on. Um, so. Again, terminate running instance, we added it in there for you, you can use it. We do highly recommend using revoke license allocation instead though, so you want to use this one all the time if someone is just, you know, they forgot to log out, they're going to be back tomorrow, just in case they were working on something um, in their installation. So if you know for a fact that they weren't um, working on anything, then you can terminate their running instance, but they will probably lose their documents. Like I said, there is kind of like a backup that runs, um, but it's not guaranteed. Um, it, you know, it's it puts it in kind of a weird spot for Quartworks to capture that and try to save that information. Uh, if they have autosave enabled, then you don't have any issue because it'll already have been backed up. But if they didn't have autosave enabled and they're not and they didn't save their work, you'll lose it if you terminate their running instance. So keep that in mind. Terminate running instance means they're probably going to lose everything, um, but they'll at least be out of the system and it'll actually close Quartworks um, completely, so you can run like an update or something like that. So. Um, okay, so those are the two options. Like I said, revoke like license allocation. That's the one you're really going to want to use on a regular basis. So now, again, you by default, you have to have admin rights or master rights in Quartworks in order to use that functionality. However, if you want to grant those rights to someone else to use, uh, what you can do is click on Utilities, go to User Maintenance, And then if you highlight a user, so maybe we'll go ahead and we'll do myself. I want to give Brandon access to be able to um, kick users out of Quartworks. Um, so he doesn't have master rights, so I want to give him those rights. So what I can do is I can go to the access tab. And you'll see there's a new security setting that's called non-master rights users can revoke other license allocation. So this basically means that um, I would be giving Brandon the ability to revoke licenses. So if he's a sales manager, he can actually log into Quartworks, see who's using the license, and revoke that license allocation. Um, there's also the option for the non-master rights user to terminate. So maybe you just want to give him the option only to revoke. We don't want him to actually be able to kick anyone out of Quartworks so that people don't lose work, but he can at least free up licenses um, you know, from, from users who they logged into Quartworks when they're supposed to be closing down. Um, if you do want to give someone the option to terminate um, the other running instance, uh, you'll see there's a uh, security setting for this one as well. Just have to set it. So these are under the access tab for each individual user. So this is for non-master rights users in Quartworks if you want to give someone that ability. Now this brings up an interesting question. What happens if all of your licenses are being used and a couple people went home for the weekend and there's no free licenses available because they didn't log out, how are you able to get them into Quartworks? Like, how are you able to get into Quartworks if that happens? Um, so what you can do is, if that happens, so we'll just go to our main screen here. Um, so what you can do is, when you are in Quartworks, when you're at the login screen, if you put in your password and then hold Shift and hit OK, this will actually show you a list of logged in users in Quoteworks. So um, you need to kick out three people in order to um, use these three licenses, but everyone stayed logged into Quoteworks. This is how you can do that without logging into Quoteworks. So if you don't have any licenses available, if you, know, you try to log in and says, hey, all the licenses are being used. If you hold shift and hit OK and put in your or put in your password, hold shift and hit OK, it'll bring up the logged in user screen. Now, you do have to have admin rights for this one. You have to have master rights in order to use this functionality or that security setting. If you're just a regular user, you don't have security rights to view this, you won't actually be able to do this. You'll have to have request the admin user or someone to do this for you. But this is how you can kind of get around it. Um, if everyone's using a, a license and you need to kick a user out of Quartworks, this is how you can do that.
All right, and let me just go ahead and get log back in there. So um, I know that answers um, quite a few questions about the licensing. Um, it's a big feature that's been requested for a long time. Um, so I'm, I see there's a couple of questions about it. Uh, I'll make sure that um, I circle back to those here. And again, for any of you that are coming in late that are posting questions, um, I will circle back at the end of the webinar and answer those for you. All right, so um, next feature, the um, exporting reports uh, in QuoteWorks. Uh, so again, that's a newer feature here. So under your reports menu, if you click on reports and then management reports, and then we'll just go ahead and select, uh, we're going to do last month's orders. So this is just kind of a default report where you view all of last month's orders. I'm going to click on edit. On the output tab is where you're going to see the difference. So um, this is what you would be used to um, prior, is where it says report layout. You select your report layout, and that's it. You can then preview it and um, view the PDF information. Now you can actually export it as a CSV or um, tab delimited file. So the first thing you'll see um, when you click on file export is you can select which fields to include in which order. So you actually get to choose which columns are going to show up in your file. In this case, I have mine ready to export to CSV. And I have my, basically, the sales rep, the document date, doc number, sold to company, sold to contact, grand total, profit amount, the unit cost for the items, and the extended cost and extended price for the items, uh, if I wanted to see all that. Um, so this is where I'm specifying for all my orders what exactly I'm going to see. You can even set a sort um, a sort by and in which order. So basically, in this case, I have my profit amount. I want it sorted from smallest to largest. That's what the A to Z means, is basically from small to big. If you see, there's also the option for some of these are going to be Z to A. That would be from you know largest to smallest. Or if you're going in alphabetical order, you know if you're doing it by like sales rep or something, that's what A to Z means, Z to A, that kind of thing. So that's going to be essentially the sort order. Works very similar to how Excel works. When you, highlight a, when you highlight a column and you tell it to sort from A to Z, even if it's numbers based, you're usually doing from smallest to largest, or if you're doing from Z to A, from large to small. So uh, that's what the sort fields are for. So you can actually choose which field you want to sort by. So to clarify, on the left-hand side, you're basically choosing the output. You're choosing which columns are actually going to be sent to the CSV file. On the right-hand side, you're setting the sort for those particular columns. So if you have a column in here, so like I have my profit amount, and my profit amount, I'm going to have my profit amount sort from smallest to largest. If I wanted to do largest to smallest, then I would select the option that says profit amount Z to A. Um, so that's the difference there uh, in those. And you can obviously sort any of the columns that you have selected on the left. You can sort, um, you can sort based on those columns on the right. So that's going to be the two differences there. Uh, the export format is going to be CSV or tab delimited. Uh, for most of you, you'll probably want to use CSV because the reason we've had this request over and over again was to get that information into Excel so you can um, you know, do graphs and all sorts of other things that are pivot tables and that are done in Excel. So now you'll have that ability to do that here. Um, you can preview the results here um, still in CoreWorks so you can actually see what it's going to look like, what's going to be um, included in the document. And then um, export the field names in the first row. If you want these field names, uh, which are going to be essentially the headers, uh, to be included in the first row, just make sure you check that box. I think most of you are going to want to do that. Um, and then the prompt to select output file will basically be where you want to save it. Uh, for a lot of you, you'll have that default um, already set, uh, but you'll probably want it to prompt you just so you're not saving over the same thing over and over again. Maybe you do want to save over it over and over again. Um, that's your option as well. And then you'll see you have the option to save, close, and export it. Just save and close, just save, and then close it. Um, so really, the only thing that's changed in the report um, window is going to be on this output tab, being able to choose the file export, and selecting which field you want to export. So if you only wanted to see the extended of the items, I can do that. And I can also reorder these. So that's what these arrows are going to allow you to do, is reorder these columns. This arrow will actually take any highlighted field and move it to the very top. Um, so You'll have to go through, basically, and these columns on the left-hand side and choose, essentially, what you want to show up in the file for your, um, your, this particular report. So um, I'll show you what this one would look like. So we'll do save, close, and export. Set this one's orders. I already had one in there, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it. 
and then we'll do view file. And then you can see, let's expand these so you can see. So we can see our information. We can see, in this case, the sales rep, the document date, the header, uh, the document number, sold to company, sold to contact, document grant total, uh, profit amount for that document, all that information. Like I said, I had my profit amount set to sort from low to high. So it's basically going exactly like that from low to high, what my profit amount is. Um, and again, our sorting works just like um, Excel, where A to Z goes low to high, Z to A goes high to low, same kind of thing. That's, uh, that's the terminology that we're using on that report window. So if you're not going to be using the, um, the exporting, uh, then your normal reports, uh, the way they were before, you can still print preview and save as PDF. Uh, just the new ones now will allow you to export. So now this last month's orders, now I can just export it so you don't have to actually go into that output file each time. It's going to save those settings. Um, so you're not having to go in there and modify them each time. You can if you want to, obviously, but you can just um, go to your report, click export, and export it out to a CSV file or your tab delimited file here. So um, again, just one of those nice features. Um, it's going to save you some time and make things a little easier, get that information out of QuoteWorks uh, into your other systems. All right, uh, and then the last couple um, Last couple of smaller features that we'll get into uh, before we start um, circling back for questions is going to be the recurring products in ConnectWise. Um, that's going to be set up under your ConnectWise setup. So if you go to Contacts, Setup Contact Manager, and then um, ConnectWise Setup, um, that will show you very easily where you can set that up. And I'll just show you pretty quickly. You'll see there's actually a new tab available that's called the REST API tab that's available. And when you um, click on this tab, this will allow you to enable the ConnectWise REST API. Um, as you can see here, you do have to be on ConnectWise 2016.3 and higher in order to use this integration just because that's when ConnectWise really support for recurring products. So that's the only reason you have to be on that one. If you're on a newer version of, or a, uh, older version of ConnectWise than that, you cannot use the recurring products, but you can still use recurring services and things like that. So uh, that's where that's set up. If you do have questions about it, um, definitely let us know. Uh, there's also instructions in the help file about that as well. Um, the quick preview, uh, so we've kind of talked about this. Uh, let me just get a couple items in here into our documents. We don't have a blank document. Um, but what this will do is when you select a particular layout, so you can see I have a cover page already selected. If I just double click on the layout, it will just preview just that particular layout. It's not actually going to show my cover page so I can see what my items would look like. So it just saves you a little bit of time. I can see, okay, yeah, everything looks good here. Everything's set up the way I want it to, and then I can go ahead and move forward. So um, it's just saving you a little time. So again, just double click on a layout and you can quick preview it. Any attachments that you have, cover pages, literature documents, anything from the links tab, none of that information will show in that quick preview. If you want to see all those, then just do your normal preview. But if you just want to see what the items look like on the layout, you know, maybe you're kind of moving things around, adding heading lines, running subtotals, things like that, um, you can just double click on the layout instead of having to preview each time. And then the credit card support for the Dell products, um, again, that's going to be very, very simple. Um, when you go into the purchasing window in QuoteWorks, and let's go to Dell here, and let's select a couple items. You'll see there's going to be a credit card uh, radio button. Simply click on that, and that will let you put in the credit card information that you need to. If you have terms set up with Dell, that's fine. Um, you can do that. Um, this is important to note that our Dell ordering is only working if you're using the punch-out integration in QuoteWorks, which means you had to have started the document in QuoteWorks using our punch-out credentials. If you don't have um, the punch-out credentials from Dell, but you want to use it, you want to be able to um, place orders through Dell with QuoteWorks, um, then we can set you up with those. There's, we have an email address you can contact, and they'll give you your credentials. It usually just takes a couple days uh, to get those. Once you get them, you just drop them into QuoteWorks. So uh, again, that's another video we have um, about the punch-out integration. So if you have questions about that, that's a great place to go. Or simply just let us know, and we can answer those for you as well. Then the last thing I wanted to mention, um, we talked about this at the very, very beginning, uh, but under your cloud account now, you're going to see QuoteWorks web support options will be available. Um, once QuoteWorks web is live, this is actually where you will go to set it up. Um, 
beta version is, like I said, um, going to be rolling out in the next couple weeks here, and then uh, for everyone to be available for purchase uh, sometime in quarter one, probably earlier qu quarter one. Uh, we're on target for everything that we've um, wanted to hit. All our milestone goals have been hit, so that's good. Um, so we're just going to kind of continue pushing forward with that and doing a lot of testing since it is essentially going to be a new product. Um, I'll tell you some of the um, best parts about Corks Web. Um, there's not going to be any migration path. So we're actually going to use your existing data. Um, so you're not going to have to worry about purchasing a brand new system if you want to use Corks Web. You're going to be able to use your existing data. Um, you're going to be able to do a hybrid if you'd like. So if you want to have some users that are on the desktop and some users that are on the web version, you're going to be able to do that. Um, if you are in the office and you want to use the desktop while you're in the office and then you go home and you need to create a quote while you're at home and you want to log into the web version, you can do that. So you're going to have a lot of flexibility with licensing. Um, we'll uh, get more into that once it's officially released. We'll be certainly sending out an email blast and um, doing a webinar about that. So um, it's kind of where we are with Quote Up. I'm sure a lot of you have questions about it. Um, that's kind of where that's kind of where we are at this point. There's not really much more to say. Um, as functionality wise, I'm sure a lot of you are having questions. We're trying to make it as close to Quoteworks as possible. Um, it's not going to have you know the literally hundreds of thousands of features that Quoteworks has, but it'll have the major ones that we use on a regular basis. So um, the integrate or the integrations and the um, the functionality and workflow in Quoteworks Web is going to be very seamless to Quoteworks. So you're not going to have to learn a brand new product. You're going to be able to kind of just use what you already know. It's just going to be on the web instead. So um, it's going to be some some different options for you. Um, hosting options. Um, we'll, we'll have some hosting options for you. So if you want to host it yourself, uh, if you want to um, have a hosting service, um, you know, do it. Uh, it's going to be up to you. So there's going to be some some different options for you there as well. So uh, we're we're trying to make it as flexible as possible, um, and we're getting really close. So it's pretty exciting. So um, you know, hopefully very soon we'll have um, something to uh, a little more concrete that we can show you. Uh, some of you have been to like the trainings where we've done a little sneak peek at the trainings um, of the product as well. So um, you you know that it is real, it is out there, um, and we're getting just kind of closer um, every day. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, go ahead and end the recording. Um, so thank you everyone for coming today. Um, hope it was uh, very helpful. Uh, if you did post a question, stick around. I'm gonna go through the questions here, um, and I'll start responding to them. Um, if you have additional questions, feel free to give us a call or send us an email. We'll be happy to answer those for you as well. Um, this video will be posted on the website um, sometime later this week or early next week.